Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements Blending Pictures video, we'll be making this soft edge collage. If you enjoy this video, make sure you click that like button, and also subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop Elements, take a look in the description for links to my complete training titles. Okay, let's get started. Doing a Photoshop Elements blending pictures project like this is really pretty straightforward. We're just using layer masks over here with a soft edge on the layer mask. But there are a couple of problems that are real easy to run into, and I'll show you how to get around or solve those particular issues. Now, I already have my pictures open up. As you can see down here, you'll find a link. My download link for all of these is in the description or up in the YouTube cards, upper right hand corner up there, that little eye icon way up there somewhere. Let's just close this down, and you'll notice that I have my windows floating, and I'll show you why in just a moment for that. But let's first open up a brand new file. So go up here to File, New, Blank File. I have mine set at the default Photoshop Elements size, which is a 6x4 at 300 resolution. Choose OK. There we go. Let's just dock that, pull it up there, and it docks. Now, the reason for the floating windows and the docking windows is that we can easily copy this image over here into this file. Now, if you're not set up for that or know how to use that, let me show you that real quickly here. Go up to the Edit menu, come down to Preferences, go to General, and right here you have these two checkboxes right there. Make sure that both of these are checked. Allow floating documents in expert mode, check that, and enable floating document window docking, check that. Now, this bottom one should be checked by default. So make sure that this one is checked. Basically, they both need to be checked, and then you're all set to go. Once that's done, you can then take a floating document and dock it by pulling it up here to the window, and you'll see right there, kind of that blue shows up. That then docks as a tab. You can then grab the tab and pull it off, and it's now a floating window. Now, the reason for that on this project is so that we can just open our image up here, grab the background layer, and drag it over onto our new file and there we go. You can then close that real easy way to transfer images from one file to another. Let's bring up our next one, drag over the background just like that, close that down and hide that layer. We'll just do this with all of these images. There we go. Real fast process, hide that one. So this is a real quick easy way to do this transfer if you have that floating window set up and there we go okay now that we have this we need to resize these to fit properly into our working file so just grab the upper left hand corner there and drag these down you want these oh you know fairly small down in the corners down here you can change the size later on if you want to but i'll be making them about about a third of the size a half up and down or a third across somewhere in there is pretty good choose okay and let's just do this for each of our images. And we'll position them at the same time. We'll put this guy down here in the bottom right hand corner. So he's about, oh, about like that looks pretty good. Again, we'll modify our sizes as we go, depending upon how things look. But let's just get them basically where we want them first. So he'll be upper right hand corner up there. And then here's the upper left hand corner picture. Real cute picture and I missed my corner on that one. So let's just cancel that. There we go. If you pull from the corner it pulls proportionally. If you pull from the edge it's going to change your proportions. Like this little kitten in here sitting on the mom's head. Real cute picture. I like that one a lot. There we go. And let's size our last image. Now this is the top image, so take this layer here, drag it to the top position so it's in front of everything else, and let's get this basically sized. It's about, about that size. Again, we're going to be adjusting the sizes and positions as we go. Okay, now we need to make our layer masks, and we'll do that on each layer separately. I'm just going to hide everything else. We'll start off with this one. Now it's best if you do this with a picture right in the middle of the page. So I'll be doing these individually. That will save a lot of the problems. If you're against the edge, 
this can cause a problem. If your layer mask goes over the edge, that can cause a problem. I'll show you both of those. We'll do one of these with one and one of these with the other problems. So you can see what happens there and how to fix that. Okay, grab the lasso tool. Now you want to make a lasso shape outside of your image. Just stay you know, quite a ways away out here. Don't go in real tight. If you go in tight, then it's going to be coming in and our blur effect will be blurring into the image. They want to keep these out a ways. So I'll just do it just kind of like this, just a free form. Now notice up here, I'm right up against the edge of the picture. That's going to cause me a problem. And I'll show you how to fix it. That's the first of our two problems right there. I will we'll fix that in just a bit. So do your lasso and then click on the new layer or add layer mask button right there. There's your layer mask. Don't worry about kind of rough edges in here. That's not going to be a problem as we blur that down. All right, let's hide that one. Let's do this step first and pull the cat up here to the middle of the picture like that. And same thing. So we'll do this step with everything and then we'll come back and do our cleanup. And then layer mask button. There we go. Back to the move tool. Put that one back down where it belongs down here somewhere down to our next picture. Now the reason I'm pulling it up here to the middle is so that the selection and layer mask stays away from that edge. I'll show you that problem on the next image. But this will save you one of your one of the issues in here by doing this step in the middle someplace. There we go. Layer mask. And let's pull that one down here. This is real kind of you know real easy cut edge on that. Okay, on this one, let's just put this right up against the edge in here, just like that, so that we have the pictures very close to the edge. And do the same thing. And I'm in fairly tight on this one, but I really want just the head. And I come right up here, just off of the edge up there, and off the edge at the top. So I've missed the edge here and I've missed the edge over here. I'm too far out up there actually. So I'm going to do a new one. Make sure you're on the new selection down here. Let's just bring this selection in a little bit closer. I'm going to deselect that. And let's try that again. Just coming in just a little bit closer this time. I don't want to have quite as much of that top. I'm also overlapping right there. We'll solve that as well. But you can see right over here, we're right up against the edge on this and that's going to cause us a problem as well so we'll fix that problem but same trick there is our layer mask and let's go ahead and just put them up into position and the final one down here this nice picture again grab the lasso tool do a nice lasso right around the head you can staying a little ways out from the head there we go and layer mask and put that back up into position again. Okay, they're all basically set on that first step. The next step now is to make a soft edge on that layer mask. Let's go to this layer. This is our top layer right there. You know you're on the right layer because you'll see the bounding box around it. Right there. Go to the right layer. There's the bounding box. Double click on the layer mask side. Look for that light blue outline. There we go. And then go up here to Filter, come down to Blur and Gaussian Blur. Now I have mine set at 25 pixel radius, which is a pretty soft radius. And you can see what happened up here. I'm actually seeing the edge now of my picture right there going beyond the edge, or, or you know, the mask is going beyond the picture area. So there's one of our problems to solve. Choose OK. We'll fix this one and then we'll move into each one of these individually and solve problems as we get to them. Now the problem here is that the layer mask is larger than the images. Our selection was just inside, but when we did the soft edge, that pushed it out beyond the edge of our layer mask. So we need to fix that. This is an easy fix. All we need is more picture out here. So let's go to the picture side, double click on the picture side go to the clone stamp tool. I have mine set down here at a soft edge brush, so just choose a soft edge brush. And right now it's at 80 pixels, and that looks pretty good, pretty good size for this. We're just gonna clone some of this background out here until we get the soft edge. So hold the Alt key down and click. That sets your clone point, and then 
we'll just do this a little bit and extend the picture out so you get a soft edge. Luckily, the background here is so hard to see, see what it is. It's not going to matter. You don't have to be that accurate in here on this particular clone stamp. It's going to work out just fine. People aren't going to be looking at that edge. So where normally the clone stamp, you have to be real careful about it. It's not as critical on this kind of a project. We just want to come in here and clone stamp someplace that has about the right color match and then just keep on clone stamping out until you come out to that soft edge which is created by the layer mask. And just go back and forth a little bit in here and work up into that edge until we achieve that positioning which gets us to that soft edge out there. Once you have that soft edge, a little bit of cat ear right there, don't want that. Once you have a soft edge, then you're okay. So there we go. That one is fixed. All right, let's move down to the next one down here. We'll pull this up to the middle again. Same thing. Double click on the layer mask side. Do the Gaussian blur filter. Now, since we've already done it once, we can just click on it up here. This does the exact same setting that we chose last time, so it's a faster way to do it. Just choose that. There's the same setting, and this one looks okay. Now, to, to be sure, Click on the background, and it, it, that gets rid of the bounding box. Okay, we have a little edge here and a little edge up there, so let's fix those two edges. And that's this layer here, same thing, layer mask side, and then the image side. Make sure you're on the image side, clone stamp tool, and we're just going to pull the background out until it meets the edge of that soft edge layer mask. So, Alt and click and then just come out and paint out there a little bit. Do that a couple of times. There we go. And only I'm going to take just a little bit up here. Solves that and that one's good. Put that right down there. Okay, next one. Right hand corner down here. Again, pull it up to the middle. Makes it easier. Go to the layer mask side. Double click. Look for the light blue outline and then filter Gaussian blur resets that. Click on your background again and we can see here it is. We're reaching the edges of the picture again. Same thing. We can fix that with the clone stamp tool. Now this is getting pretty small here so I'm going to zoom in on this. That's better. And go to the picture side. Look for the light blue outline. Clone stamp tool and let's just clone stamp out our picture a little bit here. Grabbing from anywhere that matches and add some more picture just until we take it out far enough so that it fits the layer mask. As you can see, it's really a pretty easy process to get rid of that edge. It's just a matter of extending the picture. Just like that. And a little bit of the cat right there. I don't like that. There we are. Okay, that looks good. Back to fit on screen. Back to our move tool and put that one back down here. Let's do that one last because we had the other problem on there. Let's come up here and do this one. Same thing, double click layer mask side, filter Gaussian blur, go to the background, and we need to fix this edge and that edge. So we'll do that. I'll zoom in again on this. It's getting kind of small there. That's better. Clone stamp tool. Make sure you're on the image side. And let's just grab some of this in here and clone stamp that out until we're out into the soft edge which is pretty close here so that's not that difficult to get out there luckily. Now when you see this kind of double double thing there happening that's because I'm cloning out where the actual edge of the picture is here so it's just keep on going and you'll get rid of that. Again notice that it it really isn't that critical in here on the background edge with the clone stamp tool because it's it's fading off we can't really see what it is it's it's just a little bit out there and it's fading off into nothing and most people won't be paying any attention to what's around there so it's a little more forgiving than your normal clone stamp just just because of what we're doing here because it's a bit of a 
and additional help. A little bit tricky here because there's not much that I can do right there. There's not much space to work with. You want to keep the brush fairly large in here. And there we go. That looks good. A little bit right there. I'm just going to do that there. Just kind of get rid of that little line that showed up. All right, that one looks good. And let's fit on screen again. Back to our move tool and put that up there somewhere. This is too large. We'll need to resize that, I think, when we get down to that. Okay, let's look at this one. Now, this one had two problems. Go to the background. And you can see it's a hard edge here and a hard edge here. On this one, this hard edge will right up against the edge of the picture as well. So actually, the layer mask is going to have a hard edge as well on that side. And we'll see that in just a second. Let's just zoom in again so we can see what we're doing. There we go. And there's also a little overlap thing right there. That's where I kind of overlapped with the tool as I was making my selection. It'll overlap right there. Let's fix that first. That's on the layer mask side. Still on the foreground color here. And I'm going to change my brush here to a hard edge brush. And just paint black right in against that. Just kind of I've knocked that edge off right there. There we go. Little fix. Okay, let's double check that we're on the layer mask side and filter Gaussian blur. There's our blur. Click on the background. The top was where the picture just ran out. The right side we actually hit against the edge of the layer mask as well. So let's fix this. A little bit at the bottom. So same trick. Go to the actual layer, look for the bounding box. You know you're on the right layer. Make sure you're on the image side of that clone stamp tool. Let's first fix this bottom bit. That's a cinch, just like that. And the bottom is fixed. Let's fix the top. A little more tricky here because of the fur. So just clone stamp straight up. And you should be OK on this. And just clone stamp it up until you get into that soft edge. And it'll take a, a few passes, as you can see here, to really get this. So we're doing just little, little movements on this because that edge is up so far. Now, if it gets kind of weird, like right in here, just do a little bit of spot clone stamping to kind of cover up that. And you can get up to our soft edge again. But it's the same basic problem. We need to extend the image out. Let's now do this right hand side. And as you recall, this was up against the edge of the picture over here. So our layer mask is going to have a hard edge. We can't see it yet, but we will see that as we begin to clone stamp in here. So, clone stamp tool, hold the Alt key down, and let's make sure we're on the image layer. There we go. And let's begin to clone stamp out. And that wasn't too good. Let me undo that clone stamp. Let's try that again. There we go. A little more critical here, just because of that line. And you can see there, I can't go very far. Right there, I'm hitting that edge. That's the edge of the layer mask right in there. So I can do a couple of things here. One, I can extend the layer mask out a little way. It's going to be a little bit more room to work with in here. And then I can clean up that edge. Let's go ahead and do this kind of a double, double effect here. Double click on the layer mask side. Let's change our color to white. And go to our paintbrush, which is right there. I'll change this one to a soft edge brush. Let's just find a soft edge. That's fine. And I'll set the size here to 100 pixels. Maybe a bit more. Maybe go up here to about 150 even. Pretty large size brush. So I have a soft brush, 150 pixels, large size. I'm working with white. I'm on the layer mask. So now I can extend the layer mask out a little bit. There we go. So the layer mask is now further out. It gives me more room to work in. Let's now go back to our image. And going back to the clone stamp tool, let's just 
fix a couple of those little spots here. Just kind of soften up that little edge in there. That's fine. Back to the layer mask side and change the color to black. And this time I'll paint black in from the outside. And let's go back to the paintbrush. There we are. And I'll paint back in from the outside and kind of clean up that edge. There we go. So you actually come in and work your layer mask in from both sides. You can extend it from the inside if you need to extend your picture some more. And then you can bring it back in from the outside to fix that edge. So that fixes that layer mask problem on that one. All right, now everything is set. Back to fill screen. Let's put him back up in his spot up here. Let's bring all of our images back and see how things are looking. Pretty good. A couple little problems. I'm going to move this image down further to the corner. I'm trying to keep these soft edges inside. I think he's a little bit too large. I guess he's okay in there. That looks all right. Upper left hand corner. Now on this one, he's a bit too big. So let's just make him a bit smaller so he can fit into our area a bit better up here. I just want to be able to see the eyes. So that's important. I can see those eyes in there. There we go. Okay, the overlap on the ear is fine. Maybe a little bit rough here. We'll fix that in a second. Let's get our upper right hand corner. That's looked pretty good. Again, it's a bit much right in here. This background is overlapping on the cat too much. Let's come down to our bottom right hand corner and move that cat over. I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. Get a bit more of that cat showing in there. That looks okay. All right, so looking pretty good. I just want to fix this area up here, and we'll do this the exact same trick we did over here, fixing that right side edge on the layer mask. So let's go to that cat layer. That's the top one up here, the main front cat. Double click on the layer mask side. Go to our paintbrush. We're still at 150 pixels, soft edge. And then just come in and paint in a little bit on this layer mask just to pull that in a little bit so we can kind of hide that background a touch and see more of that background picture in there. There we go. Just that easy. Okay, so far so good. So that's all of our pictures. Let's now work on the background. I'm going to hide everything here. Go to our background and we'll be doing a gradient on this. So let's first change our foreground color in here. But I'll use the swatches instead. So let's bring up our color swatches. And I'll grab this one right there. This is a CMYK cyan. Even though Photoshop Elements doesn't work in CMYK, this is the correct CMYK color. But it's also it's a nice kind of a medium tone cyan color. I'll just choose that one. Let's go to the gradient tool. Set the gradient like that at radial. And let's check this. So there's the default upper left hand corner. Like that, it should be going dark blue to white. I want this going white to dark blue. So I'll click on reverse. That reverses that. And go to the magnifying, the zoom tool here. And let's just zoom out. We're at 33% right now. I'm going to zoom this out quite a ways. Oh, down about 20, 21%, like that. Back to the gradient tool. And clicking right in the middle of the picture. Pull this way out to the side. And the reason for that is that I want to have a lot of white in here. So this just lets me get quite a ways out. Gives me a nice amount of white in the middle there. So I'm just kind of doing a real large gradient. You can also, you know, kind of adjust as you want to play around with your gradients and get the settings exactly right. But this is just faster and easier. Let's now do something else on this. I'm going to double click on the background. Choose OK. That makes it a layer instead of a background. So I can now move this around if I want to. But what I do want is to make a new layer, pull that underneath, there we are, and fill this with white. I'll just change my colors to so white is in the foreground. Grab the paint bucket and click on that. That fills that with white. What that does is it allows me to go up to this layer now and I can adjust the opacity to tone down or brighten up that background. So it gives me some flexibility on the values in the background by using these two layers together 
and the opacity setting. And I'll set this right about 70%. Okay, let's go ahead and go to fit on screen again. Let's bring our pictures back in and see how things look. There we are. Let's just float this window and I'll stretch that out and zoom in a little bit. There we go. So there's our nice blending picture using those layer masks and solving some of the layer mask problems that I'm sure you're going to be hitting or running up against. That Those hard edges are real common. One last little trick on this thing. Let's just take this and dock this again. There we go. And I'll fit screen again. If you want to adjust your values on your images. These all look fine, so I don't really need to worry about that. But if you want to adjust your values, it's easy to do. Just go to your layer. Let's just take this upper left-hand corner layer, for instance. Click on the layer. Go up to Layer. Come down to New Adjustment Layer and click Levels. And where it says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask, check that. Choose OK. That then sets this adjustment to work only on just that one layer and you now can come in here and adjust your values for that if you want to really fine tune the image and make it just exactly perfect. So it allows you to do that in here. Like that's just a bit more contrasty. Looks a little bit, a little nicer actually because there's a little bit of that bluish tone. So if you want you can do that on each one of your layers for total fine tuning control on that. But there it is, that's how you do that soft edge overlapping effect in here and solve those hard edge problems that always crop up when you're doing this kind of a collage technique. All right, there you go. That's a Photoshop Elements blending pictures with a soft edge collage. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.